uh, I want to talk about what is witchcraft, and I, I want to talk about what does the Bible say about uh, divination, sorcery, black magic, witchcraft, and also I want to give you seven uh, things uh, of how to be aware of what witchcraft is. Amen. If you're with me, someone say amen, hallelujah. Listen, I'm glad you're logging on. Do share, give us some hearts and likes. Thank you for watching. Bang, 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 amen and amen. Listen, first and foremost, uh, witchcraft comes from that English word, comes from the Latin word, which is to be witty and to be crafty, okay? We all know that in the garden, uh, we all know that in the garden, the serpent was witty. The serpent was crafty. What does that mean? That means witchcraft knows how to craft words. All right, all right. Somebody who moves in the spirit of witchcraft, or somebody, who, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna break it down today. I, since I've been uh, in the consecration mode, I've been in a real teaching mode. It's been very interesting. But uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, to move in the spirit of witchcraft means that you are very witty and you are very crafty. Now, now we know that you can be witty and crafty and not be moving in the spirit of witchcraft. But the the thing is, the serpent in the garden was witty, was crafty. He, the serpent knew, of course the serpent was an animal, but there's a serpent spirit, Leviathan, you know, Python, we could go into that as well. But the serpent was actually being possessed as a vessel by, by the evil one, by the adversary, uh, by Hazatan, by Satan. So uh, the, the evil one was actually being like a serpent, tongue twisting, twisting around words, confusing the words, the thoughts, the mind of the Lord. It, he was acting like he was cunning, which means that he was crafty. He knew what he was doing, but he was acting like he was innocent. He knew what he was doing, but he was acting like he didn't know what he was doing. All right, the enemy will always try to twist and turn your words and make you look like the bad guy, make you look like the bad person, and the enemy is always conniving and is always deceptive, okay, and is cunning and is crafty. So first and foremost, I want you to I want you to be aware of people in your life that are witty, that are crafty, okay? And not that are witty like they're smart and intelligent, okay? But they know how to turn their words around. They know how to use your words against you. They know how to uh, you know, easily get themselves out of a situation and make you look like the bad person when in fact it should be them. They they don't want to take blames, they don't want, you know, they eat they turn things around and they blame shift, okay? Now, I do believe that there are many Christian witches, okay? There are many Christian witches. In fact, there's, there's, and listen, all right, the Bible says to honor your pastors, honor your leaders, all right? The Bible says to cover uh, your men and women of God in your life. But at the same time, religion is witchcraft, okay? Religion is witchcraft. We all know that, uh, you know, there's, there's something very beautiful and powerful uh, that the Catholic religion, okay, that the Catholics have received but even in midst of that they misused they manipulated they thwarted uh those forms and they thwarted those beautiful uh revelations and they turned it into witchcraft which means that if you don't obey me you're gonna die if you don't do this you're going to hell if you don't do this, then, uh, you know, you're never going to be saved. If you don't pay uh, penitence, if you don't pay, uh, you know, all these types of things, then you're actually not just a sinner, but you're going to die. And so religion is witchcraft. Because uh, re the religious spirit is always trying to manipulate you to do something better. The spirit of religion is always trying to manipulate you, make you feel like you're no good, make you feel like you're good to nothing, make you feel like you can't amount to nothing. So the religious spirit is a spirit of witchcraft that tries to manipulate you and tries to make you feel more holier than art thou. And a religious spirit, which is a spirit of witchcraft, will actually bind you rather than set you free. Have you ever realized that there's a lot of uh, people, even in Christendom and Christianity, that, that are trying to bind you, okay? They would rather want you small and little and muzzled and be little than be powerful, than be large, than be free, okay? And, and again, there's this tension, there's this holy tension and this holy balance, but a lot of uh, people in religion and even in Christendom, they're actually moving and operating in a spirit of witchcraft and legalism, okay? And that's one of the things that I, I probably will talk about even in the next few days. There's a big difference with holiness and legalism. Legalism. There's a big difference between lust and love. 
There's a big difference between witchcraft and power. There's a big difference between prophecy and manipulation. There's a big difference between honor and idolatry, okay? There's a big difference with the divine and divination. There's a big difference. And I believe that God's given us an upgrade with discernment and wisdom to understand these powers that are operating. Now, I'm the type of person that I'm like, man, forget about the second heavens. I live in the realm of the third heavens, okay? I live in the realm of being face-to-face -face with the throne of God, but the Bible is clear in the book of Ephesians and Corinthians that there are powers that are all around. Somebody yesterday came before me uh, at the end of service, uh, His Way Life, and they said, you know, everybody keeps talking about witchcraft, you know, can you talk to me about what is witchcraft? And and witchcraft is, is witty, okay? It is crafty, okay? Witchcraft is, is there's powers around that are, are witty and that are crafty and that are trying to, uh, you know, that are trying to manipulate you out of your sound mind. Listen, I declare right now that you are getting a sound mind. I declare right now that God is giving you clarity. Okay, God, Rabosha, God is giving you clarity right now. And I break every python, leviathan, every spirit of witchcraft off of you. All these powers, all these uh, words, all these pressures. Someone say pressure. Okay, peer pressure, the bullying spirit, that is a spirit of witchcraft. I hope you hear me, okay? When somebody's trying to bully you, when somebody's trying to pressure you, when somebody's trying to get you to do something you don't want to do, it's against your conscience, it's against your will. When somebody's trying to pressure and bully you, condemn you, okay, somebody, when somebody's trying to condemn you, they're not moving in the spirit of God. They're not moving in the spirit of love. When someone's trying to bully you and pressure you to make a decision, listen, all right, listen, don't you hate it when somebody's like, oh, okay, this is a final ultimatum. Someone write that down. A final ultimatum. Do you know what a final ultimatum? If you don't change, I'm going to leave you. If you don't do this, I'm out. If you don't get this person out of here, then I'm going to leave your ministry. That is witchcraft, okay? When somebody gives you a final ultimatum in that type of way, that type of attitude, and they're saying, if you don't do this, then I'm out, then that is witchcraft, okay? Now, don't ever be bullied by a Chihuahua. Don't ever be pressured uh, uh, by a Jezebel. Don't ever be pressured to do what is out of your good sound mind and out of your conscience. Listen, I know right now there are people that are watching, and you've been you've been feeling checks in your spirit. You've been it, something's been uneasy. Something's been off. Something's been yellow flag alert alert. You know that something's off. Ramanda, you know that something's not right, but you've been ignoring it you've been disregarding it you've been trying to sweep it under the rug under the carpet so you can just move on but the Lord is highlighting to you in this time of the season have nothing to do with that have nothing to do with them amen okay listen I just feel the power of God because whenever the enemy is exposed then he cannot hide whenever lies are exposed and that's when it comes out of darkness out of hiding and that's when lies will be uh, distinguished it will be uh, uh, extinguished it will be destroyed and it will be the Defeated. So right now, I expose every snake, scorpion, rabo. I expose every hiding Leviathan. I expose it right now. Shine, Jesus, shine, shine your light. And I think in a 2020 is a year where uh, you know it's gonna be it's gonna be visible. Okay, it's gonna be it's gonna be obvious. Okay, it's gonna be visible. It's gonna be obvious. It's gonna be apparent. Okay, it's going to be apparent. All right, no more false veils of righteousness, no more false veils of spirituality, no more false veils uh, of, of uh, self-righteousness, okay? Wolves in sheep's clothing. You know what that, that word in the Greek, wolves in sheep's clothing, what that means is that the, the Pharisees would wear the white garments and the prayer shawls and the talits where it was extra heavy duty, okay? It was extra layers of talits, prayer shawls, where it looked like there was more white holiness surrounding them but come on that's an angel of light masquerading okay and god is going to give you 2020 clarity vision come on as i have been saying not 1920 not 1820 not 1720 god is giving you full vision full come on Fool, come on, come on. He's a father of lights. There is no shifting of shadows. Amen. He's a father of lights. There is no shifting of shadows. It's going to be apparent and visual, visible, and it's going to be clear. All right. Someone say clear. All right. So listen, uh, I already kind of gave an introduction. There's a lot of 
Christian witches, okay? I know I know somebody messaged me recently and said, you know, can you tell me what does this mean, Christian witches, Christian witchcraft, because they never heard the term, okay? But there's a lot of people, uh, I'm just moving it forward here, uh, that's going to keep bothering me, uh, but there's a lot of people that are Christians and they're witches, okay? They're Christians and they're moving into witchcraft. There's a lot of people that are Christians, they're moving into witchcraft, and they know it, okay? They're cunning. They're witty, okay? Now, now I, I want to tell you, first and foremost, suspicion is not discernment, okay? All right, our job is not to be suspicious. Our job is not to say there's a devil under every rock. Our job is, is not to, you know, be the, be a Holy Ghost policeman, okay? Come on, you're not a Holy Ghost patrol, okay? You're, okay, you may say you're a watchman, but that doesn't mean you need to be a watchdog, okay? Two very different things, okay? You can be a watchman on the wall, but don't be a watchdog that's on the floor, okay? Those are two very different things, all right? And, all right, you're not called to be a Holy Ghost policeman, okay? Yeah, 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 all right. Whatever, all right? But big difference, okay? Big difference. All right, I want to talk to you. Uh, somebody write this down for me here in the mighty name of Jesus. And if you're with me, if you're enjoying this, if you're receiving right now, just give me some hearts and likes right now or even some angry faces. First Samuel 15, verse 23. All right, First Samuel 15, verse 23. Now, this is one of the clearest passages uh, just about witchcraft or divination okay first samuel 15 23 for rebellion is like the sin of divination and arrogance like the evil of idolatry you better hear me now because you have rejected the word of the lord he has also rejected you as king okay i'm gonna read that again all right first samuel 15 23 for rebellion someone write down rebellion for rebellion is the sin of divination and arrogance like the evil of idolatry okay because you have rejected the word of the lord he has rejected you as king now we know in context this has to do with king saul okay listen hear me now although king saul Saul had the position and the title, he was still moving in the spirit of divination. He was still moving in idolatry. He had the title, he had the office, he had the position, but he lost the unction and the anointing, and he lost the purity of that realm. Are you hearing me? So there's a lot of people, they have a title, but they're not moving in what brought them originally to that place. So even though they're known as a man of God, as a woman of God, even though they're still on the biggest platforms and stages, listen, they're not moving out out of the same pure spirit of how, what brought them there. So our job as men and women of the Lord, as ministers of the Most High, our job is to always be on our face on the threshing floor, be humble before Him and cry out for true revival in ourselves. Come on, revive me, O Lord, as a psalmist said. Revive me in the mighty name of Jesus, okay? So I want to talk to you. you. You know Saul, the Bible says that he had the fear of men, okay? I'm telling you, all right, when you have the fear of man, which means that you would rather please man than God, you rather care about what man thinks and what man says than, than uh, the judgment seat of the Lord. You rather care about the praises of man than the praises of God, then that is an open door. Someone say open door. That is an open door for you to fall into witchcraft, all right? I'm going to help somebody here right now. That word rebellion, someone say rebellion. That word rebellion Okay, uh, that word rebellion means, uh, uh, help me here, Jesus. That word rebellion uh, means to, in the Hebrew is Mara. Someone say Mara, okay? That word rebellion in Hebrew is Mara, M-A-R-A-H, okay? And that word Mara in Hebrew means bitterness, Okay, it means bitterness, okay? Rebellion is Mara, in Hebrew is bitterness, okay? Listen, you, you are called to be better, not be bitter, okay? And if you do not deal with that bitterness, if you do not deal with that root of anger, if you do not deal with that root of bitterness, then that will become rebellion, which bitterness becomes witchcraft. All right, there's so many people that are angry at God. So many people that are angry at themselves. All right, why did you show up, Jesus? I thought you were going to heal my husband. I thought you were going to heal my wife, but they died of cancer. Where were you, God? And that root of bitterness actually comes off as witchcraft because if you do not deal with that root of bitterness where you got upset at God, where you were offended, where you were molested, where you were abused, if you do not deal with that root of bitterness, then that will come off as rebellion and witchcraft. Come on, I'm trying to help somebody here today. All right. La, 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 bosa. Saul had a root of bitterness on the inside of his heart because of an undealt with issue. 
And come on, God is saying deal with it today. Deal with it now. All right, you cannot go forward. You cannot move forward in this new year, in this new decade. Come on, you cannot. Come on, if you are in ministry, deal with your heart of bitterness. Come on, do not poison yourself and do not poison the people around you. Stop releasing venom. Stop releasing poison to the body of Christ. Come on, if you are hurting, if you are in pain, then stop what you're doing. Ministry can wait. Stop what you're doing and deal with your heart all right so bitterness is rebellion and bitterness is witchcraft deal with your heart all right so what does that mean that means that what's the opposite of bitterness sweetness love holiness purity don't lose purity okay there's a lot of people who give you accurate words of knowledge but because it's not in the right spirit it's witchcraft I love what I, I, I saw Jennifer Evas, Prophetess Jennifer Evas, post something a few weeks ago. All right. If you're mad at somebody, don't pray for somebody. OK. And that doesn't mean don't pray for somebody in the secret place. If you're mad at somebody, don't give them a prophetic word in public. Ho! Ha ha. All right. Now, now we could dissect that in a number of different ways. But is your heart right before you pray for somebody? Is your heart right before you preach in front of somebody? Is your heart right before you prophesy in life? Is your heart right? Are you following me here in the mighty name of Jesus? All right. I declare right now that in this month, right now in this Facebook Live YouTube broadcast, the Lord is healing your heart. He's setting you free from bitterness. Okay. No more Mara. Say bye-bye Mara. Okay. Say bye-bye-bye Mara. Okay. See ya. Not even Tamara. Okay. All right. Bitterness. All right. Come on. He's he's cleansing the intentions, the agendas of your heart. Amen. So don't say amen. All right. And, and also, this was actually a correction and a rebuke from the prophet Samuel to King Saul. Isn't it interesting? Okay. The prophet was correcting the king. All right. That's why apostles need prophets. That's why, uh, you know, uh, apostles need pro kings need prophets. All right. Because uh, many times prophets will bring to completion what an apostle, what a king is moving in. All right. So, uh, uh, and prophet Samuel came before King Saul and corrected and rebuked and said, rebellion, bitterness is like the sin of divination and arrogance. Someone say arrogance. Okay. This is so interesting because as I looked in the root word right now of what arrogance means, arrogance is stubbornness. Okay. And again, there's a good stubbornness and there's a bad stubbornness, but that word arrogance is also stubbornness. Someone write down stubbornness. Okay. I know you, I know you're thinking about your husband, but no, 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 but he's thinking about you. All right. So stubbornness. All right. That word stubbornness means to be insubordinate. All right, insubordinate. To be insubordinate, it means that you're com you're trespassing. Okay, if you're in the military, if you are in the governmental realm, when you are being an insubordinate, it means that you are out of line and out of order. All right, to be stubborn, to be uh, to be uh, stubborn, which means to be arrogant. All right, which means to be uh, uh, insubordinate. To be insubordinate, that means that you are being out of line and out of order. Come on, somebody. Am I helping somebody? All right. When you are out of line and out of order, you're in arrogance, which is idolatry. Because you're actually idolizing your own self rather than the word, the law of the, of the land. You're, I, you're actually idolizing what you prefer, what you're feeling, what you're sensing. Just because you have a word doesn't mean you should share it. Just because you, you, you're, you, you're getting a vision doesn't mean you should release it. Okay, just because God is showing you something, it does not mean you can walk into somebody's ministry, house, church, and release that prophetic quote unquote whatever. All right, listen, are you out of line? Is it strange fire? Is it real fresh fire? or is a strange fire and unfortunately many people are gifted but they're not moving in a place of authority where they're moving in a spirit of self-control and they're yielded to the protocol they're yielded to to uh, come on the ranking of the lord they're yielded to what god has set in stone and in place so therefore their word gets flat because it wasn't god who told them to release it god gave it to you but it was your flesh and your excitement and your carnality and your desire to prove that you're right and your desire to prove that you're heard and your desire for you to 
be coaxed and to be applauded by man to say, all right, you're anointed, you're gifted for you to get some recognition and fame. Come on. Did God really tell you to do that? Or was that you? Did Jesus really speak to you to say that? Come on now. And, and way too many people are insubordinate and out of line and out of order. So therefore it's strange fire. So it gets them not actually to be blessed and to prosper, but it gets them to have doors closed shut in their lives. Come on. There is a right way to go about things. There is a correct way to go about things. Then it must be done in the spirit. All right. And if it's done in the spirit, then it's in peace. It's in kindness. It's in love. If it's done in the spirit, then it's going to bring promotion. Come on. Rabosa. What spirit are you operating of? All right. So 1 Samuel 15, 23. Rebellion is like the sin of divination. And arrogance like the evil of idolatry. All right. All right. Uh, arrogance, stubbornness, insubordination. All right. Listen. Listen, listen, just because you're gifted, just because you're anointed, all right? If, you're, if you are gifted, if you are anointed, that means you need to, to be more under subordination, okay? Ordination, all right? Subordination, all right? Which means sub, which means to add ordination, which means that you've been authorized, you've been ordained, all right? When you're in insubordination, that means you, you're moving out of the jurisdiction of what you've been ordained to do. All right, come on now. And that's why God is actually taking back ordination from a lot of people. Ooh, that's a word right now. That's why in the season, God is actually taking back the credentials, taking back the ordination, taking back things because they're actually moving in subordination. All right, anyway, so divination, all right, soothsaying. Uh, hexes, vexes, white magic, black magic, okay? It's you conjuring something with ill motive. And it's you conjuring something. I don't know why this part is black. That's, that's really weird. <laughs> it's you conjuring something. I don't know what's going on with, 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 with uh, my screen here, people of God. Hallelujah. It, it's... Uh... There you go. All right. It's you conjuring something up with your unregenerated undealt with soul it's it's you uh, you know uh twisting and churning things for your own gain and your own ill agendas all right all right in jesus name okay that's all i'm going to talk about that right there okay i could do a whole nother time another webinar teacher whatever but i want to give you right now seven someone write down seven i want to give you seven and do share right now okay do yourself, do your friends a favor, because somebody needs to hear this, and give me some hearts and likes and do share, 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 okay? Because there's somebody out there that needs to hear this, okay? Uh, I want to give you seven, seven uh, characteristics of Christian witchcraft, okay? Seven characteristics or manifestations of Christian witchcraft, okay? Are you receiving? If you're receiving, say amen. All right, I want to give you seven, and these, this is things I've learned, the Lord has taught me. These are things that I've picked up. I've been in 46 countries, okay? I don't just read the Bible, but I live the Bible, okay? I don't just, I don't just, I don't just read commentaries, but I, but I actually see it lived out in the world, in the nation, okay? I've been to, I've been to Tibet, where it, where the Dalai Lama, the Tibetan Buddhism, some of the darkest forms of Buddhism, uh, it was created. And you know, I've been in India, I've been in Thailand, I've been, you know, I've lived in Muslim countries, I've lived in these places, okay? So I want to, I want to give you seven characteristics and manifestations of Christian witchcraft. This is very commonplace in your church. This this can be very commonplace in the ministry you're involved in. You may actually be doing these things whether you know it or not. Oh, oh hello. All right. All right. People may actually be doing this around you and it may be overlooked and excused, but it will not be for so long. Okay. I'm giving you right now seven common characteristics of Christian witchcraft. And I don't know what's going on here. All right. The devil. Let's pray that uh, it's, oh, I know what's happening. It's, the fish eye lens is actually slipping off. <laughs> uh, sha -ba -ba -ba. Anyways, all right. Uh, I want to give you seven character, common characteristics of Christian witchcraft. And you can discern this, okay? All right, number one, people coming near you. Okay, I'm going to help somebody here, all right? Number one, people coming near you, all right? Now, uh, I, I, I love it because... Um, 
You know, I love Pastor Benny Hinn. You know, Pastor Benny is so particular, so set uh, about, you know, uh, people coming near him when he's under the anointing, you know, when he's praying, when he's ministering, getting ready. And, you know, that's why the Bible is very clear that there's 24 elders, okay? There's 24 elders around the throne, okay? The Lord is very particular about who sits around him. Who is in his inner circle? Who is in his council? Okay? There's 24 elders. What does that mean, elder? It means that you've been approved, you've been acquitted, or you've been vetted. Okay? You have you have earned that place, all right, by your credibility, your history, your relationship. So there's 24 elders around the throne of God. Okay? And so who's around you? Okay? So number one, common characteristics is people coming around you. All right? There's times, you know, I'm, I'm in worship, I'm ministering, and you know, people People may mean uh, goodwill, okay? I'm not saying it's all witchcraft, it's all intentional, but a lot of times people can come near you when you're in worship and try to distract you. People will try to come near you and try to, you know, try to be in the flesh, all right? There's times where, uh, you know, people have come around and, you know, especially women, and I want to say women, okay? But women, I'll say, you know, there's been women in, in the past where they've come around me in a worship, okay? And they're trying to rub their bodies against me, all right? All right, am I getting too real, okay? Am I getting too real today, all right? Women have tried to come around, and people have tried to come around to worship and try to rub their bodies against me, okay? They're trying to, like, tantalize, and they're trying to shake their thing. And, you know, I mean, that's a form of witchcraft because it's it's getting in the way. It's distracting and trying to manipulate you by their presence coming into your sphere, their presence coming into your presence, okay? Listen, that's why Jesus himself said that, uh, all right, all of you haters, all of you people who have a lack of faith, all you of you critics, all right, you get out of the room, okay, until they leave the room, this little girl will not be raised back to life, okay, you need to clean your inner circle, all right, before you try to raise uh, things back to life, before you try to move in miracles, and the reason why a lot of people are not going to the next level is because they have the wrong people in their inner circle and around it, so I, I want to tell you, all right, number one, number one common characteristic of Christian witchcraft prayers, all right, is people coming around you. Why? Because when their presence, when their body is around you, they're actually trying to emanate some type of energy to you. Come on, am I, am I preaching here? Am, am, I, am I helping somebody here, all right? They're, they're trying to, you know, get in your vision, in your view. They're trying to get around you so that this seductive, slimy, evil, Jezebelic uh, spirit will come off of them to you. So they're trying to project that onto you, okay? And God is breaking that off, okay? And God wants to give you wisdom and discernment. That's why for me, I'm so aware of who I bring in mission trips. I'm so aware of who I bring, you know, into the same car, okay? I'm so aware, come on now, I'm so aware of, of who I bring around me. That's why even in our times of worship and conferences now, you know, I actually have our armor bearers and our bodyguards surrounding me because I don't want these people, you know, trying to rub a dub a dub their thing against me. And I'm like, listen, go away in Jesus name. Come on. All right. So number one common characteristic of Christian witchcraft prayers is people coming near you and they try to guilt trip you. They're like, they give you attitude. They're like, what? I can't just stand here and worship here. I can't just listen, listen. You're not meant to be here, okay? This is not for you. Stop trying to manipulate and stop trying to act like a victim and stop trying to, you know, uh, just, just act a full and act a fit. Come on. This, there's a protocol here. There's a system here. This is why you're not meant to be around here in this vicinity, okay? Give us some space, all right? Give the man, the woman of God some space. Stop trying to intrude their boundaries, intrude their space, and trying to get your energy and all that under. Just, 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 just get it out of here. All right. All right. All right. So, and people are going to get mad. Okay, what? I can't just worship it. I can't just in and listen. Go worship over there. All right. This is the this is the pastor space. This is the apostle space. This is for for leaders. This is for the VIP. All right. Just respect the protocol instead of acting like a little you know, and just respect the protocol. All right. So, number one common characteristic is um, of. Christian witchcraft prayers is people trying to come around you is their presence, right? Number one, all right? And I could go deeper in that, but I'm going to move on because time is going on. Number two, the second common Christian 
witchcraft, the second common characteristic of Christian witchcraft, that's a, that's a mouthful, isn't it, wordful, is uh, number two, uh, 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 objects and gifts being given. All right, I'm going to help somebody here. Objects and gifts being given, okay? Now, I want to tell you this. I'm going to say it publicly. My love language, one of my love languages is actually receiving gifts, okay? One of my love languages is receiving gifts and, and people serving, okay? Uh, I, I believe everybody's love languages to different types of people is different. You know, when, when you have fathers and mothers and elders, you know, your love language to receive and to give to them may be different from your love language from, uh, you know, subordinates or friends. You know, it can all vary. Does that make sense? But uh, number two, the second common uh, Christian witchcraft characteristic all right i'm getting my, my words muffled and muzzled here all right is people giving you gifts and objects okay now you better hear me now all right uh, a lot of people will give you items with some type of thing attached to it a lot of people will listen if people are going to give you an open door with an underhanded uh intention don't take it and there's been many times where i felt that somebody was trying to promote me or somebody was trying to get me to minister or somebody was trying to bless me but I felt that there was an underhanded uh, intention there was a false agenda and the Lord gave me wisdom and discernment so that I wouldn't take that bait come on the bait of Satan so I wouldn't take that bait but I would stand firm and I would reject it and I'll say I'm sorry you know uh, Please don't feel rejected. Please don't, you know, be offended. But I can't take it right now. You know, I'm not going to receive it right now. Okay. So uh, there's times where a lot of people, listen, like I said, my my number one way, uh, uh, one of my ways of receiving uh, love languages is receiving gifts. Okay. I love receiving gifts. Okay. Because uh, I'm such a giver myself. So I love receiving gifts. But many times when people are trying to give you things, be careful. Okay, when people are trying to give you items, when people are trying to give you things, you know, just, just be careful. And, and I believe that the Lord is saying, I want you to have the discernment, okay? Um, uh, like yesterday at, at church, I, 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 I shared, come on guys, help, help me to preach this because I've already been, you know, preaching for almost an hour now, all right? Because there's many times, um, you know, like... <laughs> You know, you can give a gift, but it can be out of the wrong will, all right? Just because you give an offering doesn't mean God's going to receive it. Just because you give a sacrifice doesn't mean God's going to receive it. Just because you give an offering, you give a sacrifice to the Lord. It does not mean God's going to receive it, all right? It may, it may get burnt, but it doesn't mean it's a pleasing aroma to Jesus, all right? It may get burnt, but it doesn't mean it's pleasing aroma to Jesus, all right? Does it make sense? So, all right. All right, so just be aware because people can have false attachments. People can uh, attach things in the spirit when they give you gifts and give you things like that, all right? And if that's the case, all right, you have a choice. Number one, you have a choice. Reject it, okay? All right, number two, if you're going to receive something, break it off, okay? Break break everything off, any hex bags, whatever. And, you, and again, like I said, all right, my, my intention today is not for you to always be suspicious and to be insecure and say, oh, there's there's a devil under every rock no there's not okay but my intention is to educate you and equip you so that you will move in discernment and you will be aware all right in the mighty name of jesus amen all right number three the third common characteristic of christian witchcraft prayers is um oh this this is good oh my gosh is people saying that they have a vision of you or people saying that they had a dream of you all right i'm gonna help somebody here almost every single day i get random messages from people saying i had a dream of you pastor ben almost every day i get a message i get a word from somebody random people people i don't know or people i don't like okay anyway I, I get a I get a message from somebody saying, Pastor Ben, I had a dream of you, and I'm like, cool. All right, pray. If you got a dream of me, then pray. Stop trying to say you got a dream from the Lord or a vision, a night vision from the Lord. Stop trying to say you got a dream, a vision of me in it, and you're trying to put that on me, and now you're trying to manipulate me according to this dream. 
you know how many times I've had people come up to me and say, I had a dream of you in it where you're supposed to be my husband. I had a dream of you in it where we were married. I had a dream of you in it where you were doing this for me. You were doing this. Okay, well, I didn't get the dream. Okay, well, I didn't get the word. So you had a dream. So did you conjure up that dream because you had too much pizza or you had too much Taco Bell? Did you conjure up that dream because of your soul? Or, or, or is God really speaking to you a message? Listen, listen, I have prophetic people i have elders i have counsel i have people surrounding me so you know according to the word of god if god really wants to get a word and a message to me then he's probably going to confirm it and affirm it through the people that god has ordained and put and situated in my life so there's a lot of people that will say pastor ben i had a dream of you i almost get this daily i am so serious i have and so people, people will say, I had a dream of you. I had a vision of you. Hey, that's great. I get dreams and visions too. Hey, that's great. I have prophets and apostles. I have elders. I have people around in my life, in our ministry, that get dreams and visions of, of me as well. And my priority, my prime decision choice is to first come to them and to hear their counsel. Because they've been entrusted in my life. The, the reason why a lot of people, uh, all right, you better hear me. The reason why a lot of people uh, get caught in the web of manipulation and get caught in the web of divination, sorcery, soothsaying, they get caught in the web of fortune telling and all these weird things is because it sounds good. And so because it sounds good, you give them access into the door of your heart without actually establishing trust. Without actually establishing an authority. Just because they bark like a dog does not mean they're a dog. Just because they, they look and act like a prophet or prophet, but doesn't mean they're a prophet over your life. Anyways, alright. Number four. The fourth common characteristic of Christian witchcraft prayers. Alright. And the reason why and all these things, alright. It's it's actually forms of prayers. Okay, it's for they may not be praying it, and I'm gonna get to that. But they may not be praying it. But your presence is prayer. Okay, uh, you talking that that's a form of prayer. Or it's Christian witchcraft prayer. Witchcraft prayers, right? Fourth comment is physical touch. Physical touch. All right, I'm gonna help somebody here. All right, I know some of your love language is touch. All right, it's the five love languages. All right, it's best-selling book it's very accurate it's it's good it's good to learn but all right physical touch can be a form of witchcraft even in churches people laying their hands on people listen don't put your hand on me I don't know you don't put your hand on my head I don't know you when's the last time you washed your hands when I don't know what you did before this meeting. When's the last time you put salt to your hands? Come on, Rabosa. Your hands stink like cigarette buds, and your hands stink like like something I don't even want to mention. Come on, physical touch can <clears throat> hand, contact, physical contact, hugging, rubbing, uh, uh, all that stuff. That can be forms of witchcraft. That's why. Um, soul ties can be made whether you know it or not. All right. Soul ties can be made whether you know it or not. Okay. It can be forms of witchcraft. And that's why I am very particular. You know, I'm very sensitive of, of who I high five, who I hug, who comes near me, all that type of stuff. Okay. Because people are just people and people are weird and, and people, man, I mean, they, they, they need Jesus. We need Jesus, okay? And so <clears throat> physical touch can be a form of witchcraft where you're actually, you know, in a sense, forming a bodily tie or a soul tie, whether you know it or not. And again, like I said, all right, we're not giving power to the devil. We're not, we're not, ma we're not magnifying the enemy. All right, we're, we're not being suspicious, but I, I, I'm giving you awareness, okay? That's why, you know, some people, I mean, they get cursed because... 
Somebody hugs them. They get curved because somebody kisses them. They get curved because you hold their hand. They, something happens. There's, there's a, a transference of things going on. So be aware of physical touch. Be aware of those that you are touchy with. Be aware of those people that want to be touchy with you. Be aware of those people that want to touch you, that want, you know, be aware. And I, again, I understand where they're wanting to, you know, touch the anointing or a garment. They're wanting to, you know, uh, hold, they're wanting a piece of the cloth. They're wanting, a, but there's a big difference, okay? All right, am I helping anybody here today? All right. <clears throat> and I could go deeper on that, but I won't because I'm already past time. The fifth common characteristic of Christian witchcraft prayers. The fifth common characteristic of Christian uh, uh, witchcraft prayers. Um, uh, help me to read my writing here. All right, is shora ba 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 ba. A fifth common prayer uh, characteristic of Christian witchcraft prayer. Okay, is commitment. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna help somebody here. Commitment. All right, it is commitment. It is, and uh, listen, I, I love commitment, uh, uh, all right, I, I, I believe we don't have enough commitment nowadays, all right, and just uh, in our millennial generation, all right, a lot of us young people don't even know what commitment is because our own parents and our own fathers and mothers separated and divorced and, you know, uh, did all these things, so a lot of our young people don't even know what commitment is because, you know, we see people coming in and out of the church and divorcing and being separated and all these things, but uh, commitment, okay, and a lot of people can and will manipulate you to overly commit. They will manipulate you to commit when you don't want to. They will manipulate you to sign your name on the dotted line, to make a pact, to make a covenant. They'll manipulate you to make a commitment. Listen, listen, listen. If you don't want to stay anymore, then leave. If you don't want to be around them anymore, then leave. Nobody is forcing you. Nobody is making you. And that's one of the common characters of a, of a cult. Because cults will come after you when you leave their cult. Cults will come after you when, when you leave their parish. People will come after you. They will attack you. They will character assassinate you. They will throw you under the bus. They, they're going to, they're gonna, you know, hunt, hunt you down and haunt you. All right? Cults will come after you and they will use the secret confidential information about you with you and they will spew it to the world and they will manipulate you and make you uh, terrorize you until you come back and that's a cult that's manipulation that's witchcraft so commitment okay commitment can be a way that people manipulate people will try to uh, uh, usurp their authority people will try to you know uh have authority over you and they'll try to fear monger you they'll try to you know they'll try to be a bully and they'll try to scare you into commitment listen listen you all right i, I agree that we as leaders one of the job one of the jobs of us as leaders we our job is to push your faith. Our job is not only to encourage you, but our job is to push you forward, okay? But it has to be done in the right way, okay? It cannot be manipulative. It cannot be over forceful where it's of the soul, it's of the flesh. It cannot be against your will, all right? Yeah, I agree. We need to trust in our leaders, trust in the men and women of God. But come on, all right? All right be prayerful, be mindful, all right? In the mighty name of Jesus, all right? And, and you know, don't don't overly commit. Don't commit when you don't want to. Don't commit when it doesn't feel right with you and your spirit. Do not commit, okay? In Jesus' name, all right? Amen. And and you know, some of you, you just need to release yourself. You need you just need to let yourself go. You need to release yourself, rababa, and you need to uh, re let yourself go. All right. All right. I, for some reason, I uh, okay. Uh, the fifth common characteristic of Christian uh, uh, witchcraft. Fifth common, all right? The fifth one is letting people pray for you. And I kind of already touched base on this, all right? So I'm gonna be short on this, although I could go deeper and expound. The letting people pray for you. Don't let everybody pray for you, okay? Do not let anybody and everybody pray for you. Please, guys, I know you need help. I know you're looking for answers. I know you're, you're looking for God, but don't let everybody pray for you, okay? All right, don't let everybody, because that can be a, a place of vulnerability that people will, um, will, will manipulate and people will usurp, okay? All right, the last one, all right? 
and I can go deeper here. The last one, you guys with me? You enjoying this? Thanks for logging on. I'm going much longer than I wanted to, but it's just so much to talk about and share. All right? If you're enjoying this, give me some hearts and likes and do share, share, share. All right? Amen? Do share, share, share. All right? And blah, 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 blah. Yeah. All right. This, this is going to be good. All right? And because... All right, let me just worship because I need a I need a pause, okay? I need to conjure up some strength right now, okay? Yeah. All right, come on, just worship the Lord with me. And write down right now what's speaking to you the most right now. Write that down right now. This, this is this good. This is going to go out with a bang. Okay, I've experienced this in my own life. I've seen it in some circles. I've seen it around. It's, it's, it's ugly. It's not okay. It's not right. Okay, the seventh common characteristic of Christian witchcraft is... <laughs> the seventh common characteristic of Christian witchcraft is people quickly saying that they are your spiritual father. That they are your spiritual mother. That they are your spiritual covering. That is such a common characteristic of Christian witchcraft that's been going on right now. Where people will, will too quickly say, I'm your spiritual father. I'm your spiritual mother. How are you my spiritual father? I only knew you for a day. How are you my spiritual father? I don't even know you. How are you? Because you, you feel something? Because you feel a kindred spirit? Because you feel a connection? How are you my spiritual father? How are you my spiritual mother? All right? Ah! They just want... To feel more powerful. They just want to have more followers. They just want to get your money. They just want. How are you my spiritual father? How are you my spiritual mother? Because you're gifted? Because you're anointed? Because you got some credibility? Wait, wait, wait. Listen. True fears. True spiritual fathers and true spiritual mothers know that there's a real responsibility and a burden. So it takes burdens in prayer. It takes many nights of crying. Our Apostle Paul said, I have labored for you. For your birthing, I've labored in the spirit for you. All right, so how dare you call me your spiritual father? How dare you, all right, how dare you call me your, your spiritual son? All right, how dare you say that I'm your spiritual, I'm not your spiritual son, I break that off. I'm not your spiritual daughter, I break that off, all right? I know who I am, I know that I belong to the Father, all right? And even though I don't have a spiritual father on earth, all right, now this is getting really good and really juicy, all right? Even Jesus himself said, do not call anybody your rabbi. Do not call anybody father, okay? And some people go on the extreme of that and they say, okay, you shouldn't have any fathers. All right, if that's the case, then the Bible is actually going against itself because the Bible says Abraham is a father of all nations. All right? So people take that out of context and say, all right, I'm not even going to call my dad father. I, I remember somebody years ago, they said, you know, I'm, I don't even call my own dad father. I call him by my first name because Jesus in the Bible said, don't call anybody your father. I only have one father. That's stupid. That's, that's being an idiot. All right? Stop taking the Bible out of context. All right? But... Do you really need a spiritual father in your life to prosper? Do you really need a spiritual mother in your life to prosper? People will manipulate you and say, you can't go to the next level without spiritual fathers. People can't say that. 
There's a principle, there's a truth and a revelation in that. But people will try to make you feel bad because you don't got a spiritual father on earth. Because you don't got a... All right. Now that can open up the whole conversation of do you need covering? Is there accountability? Is there some, yes, of course you need covering. Okay. Yes, of course. The Bible says that Jesus is the head of the church and even the husband is the head of the wife. Okay. Not the other way around. Hello there, somebody. All right. So there, there is such a thing as headship and... And leadership and all that but that doesn't mean you idolize them anyways I'm going off topic what I want to tell you today is be aware of people who quickly say you're my spiritual daughter be aware of people who quickly say you're my spiritual son and they put that on you they put that on you be aware of people who quickly say I am your spiritual father Shut your face up. How are you my spiritual father? Rabosha, I'd break that up. How are you my spiritual father? Because you feel it? Because you want to father me? You want to mother? You want to mentor me? How are you my spiritual father? What is the relationship we've had that makes you my spiritual father? Listen, I want to tell you this, okay? I want to tell you this. I don't want to be everybody's spiritual father. I do not want to be. All right, you could call me Pastor Ben, and trust me, there's many people who call me Papa Ben, or there's many people who do call consider me their spiritual father. And these are people who are double, maybe even triple my age. Real talk, I'm, I'm very honestly serious. I know I carry the Father's heart. I know I am a father of the Spirit. I, I know the Father. That's a bold thing to say, but all right? Uh, but, uh, even though I'm a young man and I'm single and, and I'm not married, okay? I don't have natural children. I have many spiritual children. But I am so slow in calling anybody my spiritual son, daughter. I'm so slow in calling anybody my spiritual children because I don't want to have full responsibility over them if they are not going to fully listen to me, if they are not going to fully yield themselves to me. Just because I have favor and an anointing and there's no right in my life, that doesn't mean I'm your spiritual father. That doesn't mean they should be your spiritual mother. All right? There's a real covenant. There's a real relationship. There's a real burden where we are broken over the people we mentor. We are broken over the people we father and we mother. We are broken over those people. And you... Excuse me, you have no right to be a spiritual father or be a spiritual mother over somebody if you have not cried in the spirit, if you have not cried in prayer over their lives about it, okay? Listen, being a spiritual father, mother is not a fun, great thing. No, no. It, it's, it's, it's a mess. It's cleaning things up. It's really covering. It's really having people's backs. It's not to say, listen, I got another spiritual son today. I got to look at all my sons. I'm a rich person. No, it's none of that. But it's really, it's a real burden, okay? So I, I, I question. Listen, the Bible says there are many teachers, but not many fathers. I question. I question when people say, I got so many sons and daughters all around. I question that. How genuine, how real, how authentic is that? How real is that relationship? Just because you feel the father's heart, the mother's heart from somebody on somebody doesn't mean they're meant to be your spiritual father mother. Anyways, I want to pray, guys, because I'm pretty tired now. Okay, I'm pretty tired after sharing my heart, pouring it out for the last hour. All right, and I, I want to pray right now because I want to break off some witchcraft prayers off of you as we are in the sixth day of the new year as we are in a new year 2020 we're in a new decade and i know many people are fasting many people and you know i could give you keys on how to break off witchcraft how to break off word curses how to break off those spiritual pressuring powers that are trying to connive and manipulate and tempt you sway you seduce you to do things you really don't want to do okay but i, I want to pray right now that the Lord will break off any Christian witchcraft. The Lord will break off any witchcraft off of you. So Father, I pray for healing. I pray for fire. I pray for freedom. I pray for breakthrough. And I thank you for many of my friends here today that are watching. 
now and on the replay that you, songs of deliverance are hovering over you. Today is a day of deliverance. You are free. You're not the same person anymore. I bless you. 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 Someone say amen. Going back to the commitment, all right, as a form of witchcraft is false vows, making false vows, making false commitments. You know, there's so many people who say, oh, Pastor Ben, I'm going to commit. Oh, Pastor Ben, I want to help you when I do this. Oh, Pastor Ben, I'm going to give you a check. I'm going to do this for you when all this. That's a lie. That's hocus pocus. Get that out of here. Listen, guys, I love you. Thanks for watching. Do share. Happy New Year. I want you to comment below what ministered to you, what spoke to you the most. Thank you.